Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today uh, for, on behalf of the European Studies section. My name is Kristen Tottleben, uh, F co-chair, Modern Languages and Cultures Librarian, University of Rochester. And my name yeah. is Lana Zaglasnova, and I'm the co-chair of, of the European Studies section. I'm the Slavic Catalog and Supervisor Librarian at the University of Toronto Libraries. So uh, we uh, will just uh, get started. And uh, the first uh, thing to do is uh, I will give an outline of what we are actually going to do today. And uh, I will uh, paste uh, this information into the chat box. So the plan for our meeting today is uh, to uh, give some background about the merger and discuss the present very briefly. Then Kristen and I will take turns reviewing the three foundational documents of the new European Studies section, that's uh, FAQs, Transition Plan, and the Governance document. And they are all posted on the meeting's website as well. And uh, then we will open the floor to questions. Uh, our hope is that uh, Kristen and I talking will take uh, about half uh, of the meeting time and that we will have about half an hour for questions. Please also note that uh, the microphones are muted, so we request that uh, you use the chat window to ask questions. Kristen and I will read the questions and respond live. So uh, I will also post the uh, links uh, to the three foundational documents in the chat window uh, if people need uh, that information. And then over to Kristen. Thanks, Lana. So um, again, a lot of this will be um, a a brief review of our documents talking about where um, the merger of our two sections into one and um, where we're where we're going with that and just uh, a, a space for uh, all of you to ask any questions or uh, bring in discussion or any input that you that you have as well so um, as many of you know the reason we, we merged was because um, we, to secure our, the work of both of our sections to have over 400 members. So it was to make sure that um, the work that, that, that our sections were doing were, was still able to continue. And um, so it's a way for us to have a sustainable uh, space within its ACRL as a united section. Um, so back uh, June 26, or actually J July 2016, our executive committees of what was WES and what was FEES voted on whether or not we should merge and on our name. And so that became, um, that decision became official uh, in summer of 2016. And then in January of 2017, this year, uh, prior, to, prior to that in the fall, um, the past chairs, Thomas Keenan and Katie Gibson, Lana and I uh, co-wrote our, our new governance documents and, trans and um, a transition plan uh, to uh, propose to, our AC to the ACRL board. So we took that document to the ACRL board at the ALA midwinter meeting last January and they approved it. So um, that's how we, um, got here. <laughs> so as of September 1st, we became a merged section. And our these documents are all available on, uh, well, they're of course on the top of the screen in, in our meeting, but also they're on the home pages of both um, the C's and West websites. And I will note as well that on both home pages, it does indicate that with the Slavic East European Studies section and the Western European Studies section, 
that they are a part of what is the European Studies section. So um, it's an indicator of that it's, they're parts of one section. So it's this idea of creating a shared culture of support so that everyone in our membership can get the professional development, learning, and other types of uh, networking need, um, interests and to still get what they need out of the section. So the next thing that I wanted to um, talk about was our transition plan. So um, as many of you may know, uh, and I also want to say a, a big thank you to all of the, the past and present leadership and membership of what was Season West because um, it took many hands and it takes many hands for our section to advance and move forward and to keep doing great things. So it's, it's the work of everyone that makes that happen. So as we um, continue, all of our committees and discussion groups have remained intact and will for at least the next couple of years. After two years, we will review the, the, I mean the, well the S executive committee will review the, our structure. Um, and there are actually three committees that have merged, which are the program planning committee, the nominating committee, and the um, award committee. There are other committees where responsibilities may intersect or converge. And we, Lana and I, would encourage uh, membership to work collaboratively with those other members from other committees, not only from an informative standpoint, but also that we're in awareness of what's going on and how we might help each other do, um, to, to work to improve what we're doing. So for instance, like publications committee and the newsletter editorial board it would be helpful for them to be knowledgeable of what each group is doing so that they can help each other. So that kind of thing. Um, with the transition plan as well, in my opinion, and you all can please jump in at, uh, for questions and, and um, input, but the, uh, the elections procedure, so, <laughs> So for 2017, we had, uh, we, on the C's section, we had uh, an election for a secretary for one year term, and then from the West part, we had a member at large for uh, election for a one year term. That is actually uh, something that it's, that will be different uh, for the European studies section. So C's did not have a member at large, and mainly the member at large is a person who represents the membership itself. They, this person convenes the general membership meeting for the section, and um, that's a meeting where everybody talks, gives a review of the meetings that the committees and discussion groups had. So that person convenes and, um, and acts on behalf of the membership as kind of a an impartial person. So like another advocate or voice for the membership. So 2018 this year, we had quite a few people that we, that our amazing nominating committee put um, and um, got together for our slate. So we had, gosh, oh, they had it. Oh, um, Lana, could you move over, uh, us over to the um, transition? Or actually, I think I just did it. Sorry, folks. So for 2018, we'll have a, I think it's a two-year vice chair, chair-elect, and a uh, position uh, slate three years for a chair and then a year, uh, a year for the 
secretary and a year for the member at large. So, um, and Lana, please correct me if any of that is incorrect. No, this is uh, exactly uh, the situation. Okay, and, and anybody, correct. okay. All right, so um, I will pass the um, mic over to Lana about the merger FAQs. Thank you very much, Chris. And for those uh, who uh, just joined us, uh, I would just like uh, to confirm that everyone uh, can hear uh, Chris and, and I when we speak, because from the chat box it looks uh, like some people were uh, having trouble uh, connecting uh, and dialing in, especially if you're using the phone. So uh, we'll just uh, take uh, a few seconds. Uh, and uh, looking at the chat box, oh, that's great. It looks like... Uh, Everyone was able to uh, connect either with the computer or uh, with the phone. Uh, and it looks like, uh, unfortunately, some people had to uh, log in and log out. So hopefully, when they log in back, uh, the situation will be resolved. Or, uh, yes, uh, we can send the recording uh, to the uh, people who unfortunately have some technical issues. All right, uh, so thank you everyone. It looks, uh, yes, it looks like everyone was able uh, to uh, connect uh, and uh, hear everything. So uh, if you just uh, joined us again, uh, the uh, plan for the meeting uh, is posted in the chat box uh, at the very beginning of the start uh, of the chat menu. So Kristen and I are taking turns going over our foundational documents, the FAQs, the transition plan, and the governance document. And then we will open the room, uh, literally the virtual room for questions, and we will ask you to use the chat box to type in your questions. So the FAQ document is uh, uh, also posted on the um, meeting site uh, at the top uh, menu. Uh, first, can you please uh, pass uh, the uh, ball to me so I can uh, scroll uh, through the document. Thank you so much. And you can also find it on the uh, CS and web uh, website as well as on the uh, European Studies section ACRL website. And uh, these links are all posted at the beginning of the chat message. So the FAQ document uh, was created uh, a while ago, as you can see, and a lot uh, of these questions have already been answered. So uh, question one discusses the uh, rationale for the proposed merger. Kristen already covered that uh, in great detail. So thank you, Kristen. And uh, the merger took place already, and the implications for individual West and CS committees uh, have been discussed already. So the overall mandate is that the section is free to reconfigure itself uh, regarding committees and subsection level bodies, but the only three changes so far, again, as Kristen has mentioned, affected the nominating committee, the conference program planning committee, and the award committee. These all have been merged. All other subsection committees uh, remain unchanged. Uh, there are question three, uh, two uh, section chairs uh, of CS and WEF uh, have become co-chairs, that's Kristen and myself, and we work together on uh, the governance um, of the section uh, in our role as co-chairs. Question four uh, is more is uh, relevant uh, to those members of uh, former states and web who also had responsibilities regarding Eurasian studies. So uh, Eurasian studies uh, are not included in the new, so Asian studies, Eurasian studies are not included in the new mandate of the section because that would uh, really stretch the boundaries uh, beyond uh, the limit. So uh, those uh, who uh, have an interest in Central Asia should be aware of the Eurasia and Central East subcommittees. 
within ALA International Relations Committee. So uh, we are in the European studies section uh, geographically limited. Uh, Kristen already mentioned uh, that the vote uh, took place by the executive committees and uh, with the uh, overwhelming majority, the vote uh, was yes in favor of merging and the new name of the section is European Studies section. Question six, uh, basically everything has come to pass and to pass and we are now in year four of our transition. Uh, the transition is complete and uh, we are in the new European Studies section. Uh, maybe, uh, are there any questions about that document before we uh, move on to the transition plan discussion? Doesn't look like it. So over to Kristen again. Uh, she will go over the transition plan document. Thank you, Kristen. Okay, so I, I mentioned um, most of already about the transition plan. Um, as I said, everything, all the committees and discussion groups were um, brought into this new section from what was West and what was Seas. The only um, things that committees that merged, again, were the award, the award committee, the conference program planning committee, and the nominating committee. With the conference program planning committee, so the that's already um, at annual, they met jointly already, so they um, put in the proposal uh, together. So that that was underway, and so we're, we're positioned for annual to have um, the joint representation um, as a merged section. So um, I believe I went over most of the larger points, and of the transition plan, um, and again, to remind you all that, after, uh, so September 1st was the day that we merged, and two years from now is when the executive, the S executive committee uh, will review the, our structure and composition of our section. So I think with, um, with time and with our membership and work of, of many hands, of many voices within our membership that will help us uh, transition and um, evolve. So next I, I'd like to um, to uh, ask that, that Lana talk about the um, governance documents, please. Uh, thank you, Kristen. So uh, the governance document is an expansive uh, administrative document. And as Kristen has already mentioned, uh, it came as a result of work of the executive committees of WEF and CS um, at the time. So what these committees did is look over the respective government documents of the two sections and uh, create uh, a truly merged document of policies and procedures uh, to make sure that uh, the, not, nothing, basically that nothing is lost in transition. So uh, the format of the document uh, really is determined by ACRL and ALA uh, policies. As you can see, uh, there is uh, a lot of, uh, I would say, this bureaucratic jargon in it. Uh, the name and the purpose is basically a template that uh, all uh, uh, ACRL ALA sections uh, adhere to. So uh, the name uh, is the European Studies section. Uh, the purpose is to represent the librarian and others uh, who specialize or are otherwise professionally involved in the acquisition, organization, use of information resources originating in or related to European studies. Uh, membership is open to all members of the Association of College and Research Libraries. I'm just um, scrolling down the list and again, um, down the document, and again, um, these documents are all posted on uh, ACR, uh, on ACRL ESS website as well as uh, on the respective East and West side uh, sites. 
uh, the meetings are held at uh, midwinter meeting and ALA and the annual ALA. And uh, we have just um, finished um, submitting the proposal for the uh, midwinter. And um, the uh, part of the document that is most relevant for uh, this section as a merge section is the list of officers. So as Kristen already mentioned, uh, you will notice that uh, in addition to the standard roles of the chair, uh, vice chair and chair elect, the immediate past chairs, there is a secretary and a member at large. So some of these terms will be more familiar to people uh, who have come from West and uh, those um, who have come from States, uh, the role of the member at large uh, might be less familiar. So I will actually ask uh, Kristen again when we come to that role to go over that part. Uh, so uh, the section has uh, the chair, uh, oh. again, uh, fairly, uh, fairly standard. Uh, uh, and uh, the current uh, situation is that Kristen and I have become co-chairs, uh, as already mentioned. So uh, we will uh, remain uh, chairs until the next election cycle, which, will, uh, which again was outlined in the uh, transition document. So um, that's uh, why we have to go over all three documents uh, in turn and then maybe revisit them to see uh, how uh, the actual uh, life of the section will be administered uh, after the merger. So uh, there are the two uh, co-chairs. You can refer back to the transition document to see how uh, uh, this uh, is implemented for us uh, at uh, the moment. And uh, there is uh, the, uh, uh, right, so, uh, and then uh, there is um, uh, the two past chairs for our section. And uh, uh, then uh, there is uh, the secretary whose role is uh, the recording officer for uh, the section. And then uh, that's uh, the person who takes uh, meetings uh, minutes uh, of the midwinter and the annual section, uh, meeting. And then uh, the uh, member at large, uh, that is the, uh, the role that is uh, more familiar uh, to the West. So, Chris, if you don't mind reviewing the responsibilities of the member at large uh, at this point. Okay. So, um, and then Thomas had mentioned, and thank you for mentioning this, in the transition plan, um, that the C's newsletter editorial board was added after the committee constitution of S, and um, we had it amended. So it was, it was um, surely by accident, but it's, it's in there, and it, so um, the C's newsletter editorial board is still a part of our section. So I, that's, I wanted to confirm that and, and thank you, Thomas, because um, we, we had fixed that. So with, with these documents, with uh, where we're at presently as a section, Lana and I are, our first, as this first year as a merged section, our goal is to, is to help create a community as, a, as a, um, our sections have merged. So to help um, all of our membership feel welcome, that they can still get what they need in their professional development and in meeting other colleagues and their, um, their learning um, and development. So what we'd like to do now is open the floor for questions and input and conversation. So. Um, Thank you, Kristen. And uh, I can see there is, um, a comment from uh, Brenda already in the chat box. Uh, ESS was officially formed this year, but it is not yet represented on the ACRL side. SAID and West are still listed as uh, separate sections. Uh, that is uh, a very uh, fine point. Uh, thank you, uh, Brenda, for uh, mentioning this. 
So uh, there is a web page uh, for uh, uh, European Studies section. I will just uh, paste it into the chat box. But it's true. So if you go to that uh, link, uh, you will see the European Studies section information and the, uh, and the full roster of our uh, executive uh, committee and uh, chairs of um, working group and committees. And then if you go to resources, you will see that there, is, uh, there are links uh, to the transition plan and the link to CS website and WEF website. So this is uh, the current uh, representation for uh, as uh, the European Studies section. It's true that we do not uh, have a, a web site outside of an uh, ALA uh, that uh, would be similar to this and said, but again, uh, this is just uh, following the merger and this uh, is uh, how the resources uh, are represented. Uh, also, uh, I might just uh, mention the roster of, on that side, uh, on this side. So, in addition to listing the co chairs, uh, you can see uh, our secretary, uh, Mara Bansa. Uh, you can see a uh, past chairperson. Uh, we have two past chairpersons, the uh, respective past uh, chairs of the CIS and West. You can see our member at large, Diana Brooking, and then a list of chairs of uh, committees and working groups. Uh, I think many of you are in that meeting, so thank you all for joining. Yes, it's definitely something that um, that we will, as a section, be working on. Um, I, my immediate thoughts are: I'm imagining, with help from the Publications Committee, the CS Newsletter Editorial Board, and the Executive Committee, um, there's um, there are a lot of things that were. That, that will you know that will be that will happen and um, so it's little by little we're we're working on that and of course not without the decision making of our membership and input of them so it's 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 definitely a process <laughs> and again thank you uh, I wanted to again thank all of the the past leadership and and membership and current membership for all the work that was put into making this happen. So a new adventure awaits. Oh, and then we have another. Uh, so Myra Bunsa has a question. Since I am the new secretary, is there anything you need from me before midwinter? So I would say We'll, we'll be in we'll be in touch, but um, for the and our governance documents, we have a few things listed there. But um, the secretary will be taking notes for the executive committee meeting that that's part of their responsibility for midwinter. Um, also, um, we've still been we've been, we've still been to be honest um, trying to figure out with having a merge section having the. We still have two websites and 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 um, updating the the websites to reflect our current membership. So actually, that would be a really helpful thing is to work with um, the to get the the membership of the committees and discussion groups updated in the seas and the west. What uh, those websites at this point. For this for the 2017 2018 year, so that people can go to that, and so I think that would be, in my mind, one of the most um, pressing things that would be helpful. Thank you, and we can definitely help you with that because I know that seems like a tall order. Are there any other questions or uh, input or ideas? Uh, Sandra uh, Levi. Is pointing out uh, that the link on ESS still goes to the old web page and uh, suggestions for uh, clarification with uh, the roster membership. So uh, I'll just read that comment. Uh, ESS link goes to the old web page. Also, the roster should mention the committees that this committee uh, uh, scrolling. This is a problem. That the committee chairs. 
listed. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think this is the note uh, for uh, Israel to take care of. So thank you for pointing that out. A note from uh, Thomas Keenan to all participants. One thing that came up at the CS meeting at annual was that traditionally the CS chair has reported on the activities of CS for a given year to ACES uh, committee on ACES clear as the ACES uh, convention in November. It's not clear who will be able to do this for uh, EFS in years where both chairs and vice chairs are people not attending the ACES convention. Should that happen? Anyone have any thoughts? On this. Thank you, Thomas, uh, for that question. So, uh, ACES is Association of Slavic, East European, and Eurasian Studies, and CLEAR is its Committee on Libraries and Information Resources. And traditionally, uh, many Slavic librarians are involved in the activities of both uh, ALA, CES, and ACES, or one, uh, or just one of them. And so, uh, I guess uh, the answer to the question, anyone have any thoughts on this, is yes, because Thomas, uh, you uh, thought about it and brought this up. And this is definitely, uh, the, the short answer is uh, that in the immediate future, as current co-chair, uh, I would be happy to uh, give that report and add, uh, also someone uh, who was involved in, in CS and who is involved in ACES. And we should think uh, about uh, making uh, a formal commitment uh, to these. I'm, I'm not sure if that should go into the responsibilities of the uh, chair or uh, staff chair, but this is definitely something that we should uh, consider. Thank you for mentioning this. So I have an idea about that. Uh, so I was thinking that uh, on one hand I wondered, I mean, for now since it was traditionally the the CES chair's responsibility, um, and then with the executive committee reviewing in, in a couple years that they could make that decision, but um, one idea would be to share that leadership role and have an ACES representative, like a person from S, who would do that. So we might um, ask uh, someone from uh, from our membership who's part of a committee or discussion group, or even just I. I mean, it's not my decision, but it, it's just an idea that it would be a nice way to share, um, re, you know, responsibilities and leadership and and um, get other people involved. So that might be one possibility. Yes, and uh, Diana and Katie and, and Jonathan uh, have all typed uh, in their responses to that uh, suggestion. So yes, uh, a formal role as uh, a liaison to ACES is something that will need to be addressed uh, in our documentation. Thank you. Uh, Brenda uh, has a point uh, in the chat box now uh, that I'm looking at the main ESS site, being a cataloger. I've noted that the Slavic Cataloging Committee is not listed in the ESS committee list. Uh, that, uh, unfortunately, uh, let me just... Uh, That committee um, has been in a bit of um, a prolonged search for a name. So on the list of uh, committees on the ESS site, it's uh, recorded as automated, automated bibliographic control committee. So that's um, the link. That's how it's known. But uh, I think in our uh, foundational document, there is uh, a typo. And instead of calling it the automatic the Geographic Control Committee is referred to as the Slavic Cataloging Committee. So it's the oversight in the document, unfortunately, not on the website. I'm just going to post uh, that link into the chat box. So, 
And um, Katie had mentioned that there was, uh, she brings up a good point that uh, in the past, Wes has had a uh, liaison uh, for the Modern Language Association, someone who attends that conference, and that's something that we plan to continue as well. So it, it might be analogous to the person who's going to an ACES conference meeting and um, as a representative and reporting on um, that conference. So that it, it might be something similar, uh, but we'll have to see what our what uh, executive committee thinks in time in our membership and and see how we want to proceed with that. So what else is on your mind? Oh yes, and then Katie mentioned the structure might be a bit different. The MLA liaison is formalized through ACRL, but we could do a less formal liaison from the section. Um, yeah, so that, that sounds possible. These are all great suggestions. Thank you very much. Yeah, so, this is very helpful. So, so definitely, uh, as uh, Kristen has said, uh, we're just uh, starting as a merge section. So it's very important uh, for everyone uh, to uh, engage uh, in that sort of collegial discussion. We all know uh, that there will be uh, points uh, to clarify and to streamline. And uh, it's uh, a bit of uh, an administrative effort, but it's also uh, quite essential to our being able uh, to function together and uh, to move ahead. So, thank you. And uh, a note uh, from Brenda, going back to uh, uh, the cataloging committee, uh, the name should be changed uh, to reflect our activities because ABC means very little to anyone anymore, uh, which I know we all discussed in the past. That is very true. Uh, I know that uh, a name change has been discussed in the past, uh, so this is something that the uh, committee um, can also revisit in its current activities. Okay, are there any other questions or um, comments or conversation starters, ideas? There was a question from Diana. Uh, to all participants about the role of the secretary uh, for SAFE in the past, uh, secretary used to attend all committee meetings. Will that be doable now after the merger? Are there any meeting conflicts in the merge section? Kristen, there may uh, be. Yeah. I um. Yeah, I'll. We'll have. I. There may be some some um. Timing conflicts, um, but I think overall, most meetings should be. Um, they should. There, there, there aren't really any. Um, but I need to double check. And I know that there are a couple groups, uh, committees that are meeting online. So um, we would. It, I think the ones that there aren't any timing uh, conflicts with um, the secretaries schedule, whether they're online or um, at the conference itself, please um, attend those. But um, we may, that might be another decision as we move forward to see um, what everybody would would think for that. If, like, for example, like Katie mentioned, in West, the secretary goes to the executive committee and the general membership. Um, in this general membership meeting, this this is something unique, uh, well, that West has that Seas didn't have. Um, and it's it's the, the space, it's an hour and a half meeting before the executive committee meeting where each, um, there's a representative from each committee and discussion group and they report on what they did during their meetings um, for the mid, you know, for each conference. So it's kind of a rundown on what happened so in, in practical terms, it would make 
it would be a, efficient and effective for the secretary to most definitely be required to attend that general membership and the um, executive. And the meetings that meet online will have some sort of report out on that as well. So we'll hear back even if, you know, there's like one person that's part of that group or if Lana or I or someone else was in that meeting, they can report on it too. So that might be the most feasible option. And we also but, have um, comments from Thomas and Diana on, on the role of the secretary in state. Uh, so Thomas points out that um, uh, my own memory is that it's been the same for states, but that if the secretary for the section records the all committee meetings and the executive committee meetings where each committee renders uh, the report. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Uh, so uh, that might be uh, an option to attend uh, this uh, uh, general mem the general membership meeting of West and the all committee meeting uh, and the executive committee meeting of uh, states. And then Diana also points out uh, that another option would be to, uh, well, not another option, but a, work, a working option would be uh, to delegate people in some groups whose duty it is to turn in their minutes to the secretary, or maybe it's enough again to attend the general meeting and hear the reports. So it looks uh, like uh, the role of the secretary uh, has uh, greatly expanded. And maybe uh, I'm just thinking here. Um, on my feet, uh, though uh, I'm sitting down. But uh, maybe uh, the uh, executive committee uh, can have uh, an online discussion about the role of the secretary uh, as a follow-up to that meeting. And maybe we can uh, come up with uh, a working recommendation for the secretary. Uh, how does that sound? Agreed. And I will say, so in the past with the I mean, with the all committee meetings, um, well, with CS, I know it's it's all the committees meet and they discuss um, what you know, the committees are doing. Um, and I would say in this general membership meeting, it's the purpose of that. That is more of a review and summary. But then in um, and and what I've done for this for this midwinter conferences, I've assigned a separate one for all committees. Just, um, I thought that it especially, and it's, it's the way that, that Wes has done it, but I thought is especially as we're merged, it would be a really good way to get folks from the committees to work, to, to talk together and to be in the same room and talk about what they're doing and it's more of a, I would, I would say that that purpose of that all committees meeting in this context would be more of an action-based meeting where you're convening and making plans and talking about, you know, what the types of things that you're going to be accomplishing together. So it's it's more of a, all committees in this sense is kind of an action-based, but I think as this next conference, the next, midwinter will be the first time that will be merged at, at a you know, in a, at an ALA conference, it would be good to hear from different committees and get to know each other and get a sense of, the, you know, the work that that they're, not only that they've done before, but what they're interested in doing and get a sense of those committees so that we can all be better informed on, on what they do. So um, that's the general sense for that. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. Uh, thank you, Kristen. So uh, I think uh, I just uh, typed in um, that suggestion in the chat box. Uh, and uh, our secretary is replying, saying, uh, I will be in touch with you co-chairs uh, to make sure I understand all you need from me. I can definitely attend as many meetings as possible. Thank you so much. I do plan to be at both midwinter and annual. Thank you very much, Myra. Uh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, very much appreciated. And uh, uh, this discussion has been really helpful. So uh, there will definitely be a follow up. Uh, I'm just scrolling up uh, the chat box. Uh, there is also a response uh, from uh, the uh, chair of the uh, automatic bibliographic uh, committee, uh, Larissa Walsh, uh, regarding the uh, name. Uh, of that committee. 
catalog and issue discussion group is different from the Slavic and Eastern European cataloging committee? ABC current name question mark. Is this a group for a more general interest for both sections, Western and Slavic slash Eastern, or will only address Western language cataloging issues? That is an excellent question. Thank you very much. Uh, this is um, this has been noted um, also by um, many people in the membership that, uh, in addition to the overlap, uh, apparent uh, apparent overlap between uh, the Publications Committee uh, of uh, former West and uh, the SAIS uh, 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 publication. Uh, there is also the uh, apparent overlap uh, in uh, cataloging being the topic of activity for the uh, Slavic and Eastern European section former Automatic Bibliographic Control Committee and uh, the Cataloging Issues and Discussion Group. And we, yeah, we did um, schedule them as as separate meetings. So um, I know that the Automatic Bibliographic Control Group is meeting virtually for midwinter, and then um, the cataloging issues discussion group is meeting in person at, at midwinter. Right. So we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see how the groups, you know, and, and they, in the future, I mean, I know, for instance, um, with, within West, there, that what was West, there were times where groups would um, co-convene. So that, I mean, it's always a possibility down the road, but we want to respect, you know, that everybody still has their, their meeting spaces and that things are kept intact for now. Did I address that? Oh, hello? Yes. Uh, it, it it is something that uh, will just have to be um, addressed uh, in, in practice. So we do encourage uh, the new membership to address uh, to attend uh, uh, each other's meetings uh, online and in person uh, to meet each other uh, to see what the agenda is at uh, your respective meetings and uh, to contribute to each other's uh, activities. Uh, and uh, to have conversations. Uh, this uh, is the only way to find out uh, the answer to that question. Yeah, and uh, Diana, uh, a comment from Diana in the chat box uh, states, uh, I think time will only tell about if any committees and um, discussion groups will merge in the future or will just continue as uh, separate. Yeah. And uh, the response from uh, Larissa is, uh, uh, okay, sounds good. Can I suggest them to call it uh, the, uh, I guess, cataloging discussion Western group or something to that effect? So again, this is a conversation to have between uh, the uh, respective, uh, when the respective committees uh, and the membership. And uh, it would seem to me that uh, it would have to begin uh, with uh, Meet, uh, with actually uh, attending each other's meeting, looking at uh, previous meeting uh, minutes and agendas, and just figuring out what, uh, how much overlap there is. But I can see the point uh, about uh, the name, because uh, one name that does look uh, more general than the other. Uh, I think this is uh, the point of Larissa's question, uh, because cataloging issues discussion group uh, sounds very general, and then the Automatic bibliographic control. Um, I guess it's also general. So there is definitely um, room for discussion here. And uh, yeah. coming up uh, with a more precise terms. Definitely things to consider that will um, that will need to surface. Right. As and time by. And there is a, a comment from Thomas. Uh, 
again on the subject of automatic bibliographic control committee, and I will just read this. Uh, the rationale for maintaining ABC in its current incarnation was the fact that because of issues with non licensed scripts and diacritics in both in Slavic and Eastern European languages, and because ABC functions as something of an advisory, if not a regulatory body, it goes beyond the scope of a discussion group. Whereas the former West and discussion group discuss more general cataloging issues. So that's the difference between a discussion group at a and the committee. Thank you very much, Thomas. Yes. Yes, and there, I mean, we've, we've kept, you know, we're not proposing to merge any of those, of, of that group with the cataloging. Um, I, I know that's not what was, was um, stated. I just wanted to uh, affirm that. So that's, that'll stay intact. And um, but again, as, as um, Diana was saying, as time goes by, but, you know, and as, and as the transition plan, you know, it, it says that after two years, the executive committee will review the structure. And I would dare to say also that, you know, we can talk about naming as well um, and other details about how to, how to um, modify what's happening with our section with its structure and governance and other procedures and policies. Um, but just, um, we just want to make sure that they're, that they're um, well thought out and that it reflects what our membership wants. So it, it'll take some time. Thank you, Chris. Uh, and uh, I will just, uh, for those of you who are uh, phoning in, I will just read two more comments uh, from the chat box. Uh, Jonathan Marner, uh, on the subject of um, the cataloging committees and working groups. Uh, Jonathan said, I would agree with uh, Thomas's characterization of this. And Larissa, uh, the chair of the Automatic Bibliographic Control Committee, says, I actually like the name Slavic and Eastern European Cataloging Committee. We should look into this. So it's great to see uh, that uh, the discussion has already started in a very uh, productive uh, and uh, forward looking way about uh, uh, maintaining or uh, modifying uh, the current structure and the uh, current names of the committee. Thank you, everyone. Uh, are there more questions, present issues, anything that you would like to type into the chat box? Some people have already had um, to leave, so uh, thank you very much again, everyone, for attending. Uh, we have uh, almost seven minutes more. Kristen? Well, um, if anybody, and of course, if anybody has any other questions afterwards or you'd rather um, discuss them uh, non, you know, not on, in the webcast, you, please feel free to contact either of us with our email. Um, and I'm, I'm just typing in, oh, I'll have Wanda type in her email address, and I just put mine in, and, but um, we, it's really helpful, um, and because we can't, you know, this is, this is about our membership, and we just want to make sure that we have an understanding of things that are on your mind. Very much uh, supportive. Well, and if there are no further questions uh, at the moment, uh, again, uh, this is the two email addresses. Uh, feel free to contact us individually or uh, to continue that discussion on uh, the Slav lists uh, and the uh, West L uh, mailing list uh, of our two memberships. Thank you uh, very much for attending, for finding time in your very busy schedules at the at this time uh, of the year. And uh, we will definitely follow up uh, with a written summary. Uh, we will continue that discussion. And uh, the link to the recording will be posted uh, very soon after the meeting. 
Yes, thank, thank